Hello everyone and welcome to our Arkham Learning Series or hopefully back to our Arkham Learning Series. In this video, we're gonna be covering exactly what you need to know before you start buying Arkham Horror, the card game, or if you've already bought some things, some maybe new decision-making strategies moving forward. That's right. So Robert, Break it down. We've been uh, we've been playing Arkham for uh, since the beginning, right? You remember the demo we got it? Yeah, Nintendo? that was an amazing demo. So there's a lot of things that have actually changed uh, since that that original demo game happened. A lot of weird products have come out for a Arkham. A lot of weird products. And so we're going to start with the least weird of all of them. The where, core box. Where we we think everybody where should it all be began. starting. So this is your core box. It's so heavy. Weighs three pounds. If you guys uh, don't know. Fantasy Flight Games, the living card game model, generally starts with what's called a core set. And this core set's gonna have everything that you need to play in it. So it's gonna be your cardboard token sets, little punch out cardboard tokens. It's gonna be the rule books. It's gonna be a number of cards, you know, that you can build early decks with, That's all right. this kind of thing. So you got to start with the core set. There's just really no better way to do it. Now, there is a caveat. There is a caveat. It's missing one critical component. What's that? What could it be? It's the dice bag, not the dice bag, the token bag. Look at this. I got it one is, here. It can be either. They can so, switch it. So that is one thing. Like you know, if you're in a pinch, you can use like a Ziploc bag. Just close your eyes. No, that you kind can't. Of thing. It's transparent. Or you can, uh, <laughs> or you can, you know, put them on the table and rough them around. Just don't. Yeah, cheat. put them in a hat. Reach, you know, above where you can see something like that. So we bought this nice uh, thematic, you know, dice bag. It's got that the was little... actually prize support from something early on. We didn't buy it then. We did didn't we? buy it. It was a lie. Well, thanks for supplying it for our game. So mm -hmm. we've also got Fancy Flight makes some. Doesn't look like a bag, but it, there's a bag in there. They call it a dice bag, but most people aren't putting dice in it. Uh, but they come in a variety of options, vortex, slime, claws. <laughs> a lot of different bags out there. So any bag will work. Uh, you, can, you will need one of those. And then the second thing is, uh, it, this policy and the way that they do this is always cause for confusion for a lot of folks. But really, really, really. should probably buy two core sets to start. Now you don't absolutely have to do that. That's right? true. You can you can build essentially you can scrape together two decks out of a single core set. And if and if you look on the back, they're fairly honest about it. That says that this unit here is for one to two players, which is accurate. If you're going to make decks out of this puppy, you're really only going to be able to make two decks because of the uh, quantities of the cards that you get. It's usually just times ones, and the way that the various uh, spheres. What do they call them in this game? Yeah, Can't quite remember. Them. Factions, spheres, factions, spheres. Thank you uh, overlap you're really just going to be pressed for the cards that you want to play particularly the good ones and they're gonna be and so there's a lot of you can have two of any card in your deck That's and right. there's a lot of cards in here that there's only one copy of so if you want to really build a deck that you're happy with you're proud of you want to tell your mom about then you probably need two courses yeah sets. not only a deck you're happy with but uh, as many decks for four players that's correct. So here's the other thing so now you could buy your two core sets you could even buy your one core set play with a friend be done. Treat it as a board game. Everyone's cool. It's happy. It's, it's a nice it's very, experience. Very it's fun. Time. Because in this core set, you get a number of scenarios where you know you run through some things and you fight some things and you investigate some things and it's really fun. Figuring things out. But the replayability of all of that, you know, it's you very can, low. You can do it a, a few times, maybe with some different cards and mm -hmm. feel it out a little bit differently. But eventually, you're no doubt you're going to love it, and then you're going to come into the space where you're like, well, well, I want to do more adventures. I want to do adventures. more scenarios. Yeah. So let's introduce the second product type that is important. This is the expansion. It's yes. a little bit smaller, so if you look at it's it compared to the unbalanced. core set, let's do this a little about comparison. 10 inches here, I think, what, eight-ish or so there? About there, about a little bit smaller Six, there. Six, eight, something. So this is an expansion, what an expansion does is it essentially, it's a tiny core set. It takes out all the rule books and the, the tokens, tokens and all the things that you need. And instead, it replaces it with more fun, which is essentially a lot of thematic cards that are going to introduce a new uh, setting, basically. Right. So for Domwich, we're, we're dealing with some real nasty baddies here, and we're going to be running around. Yeah. Look at that. It's like a beholder in a, in a tree combined. And it is the first item that kicks off what is referred to officially as a cycle, uh, which is essentially a perfectly contiguous adventure and theme. Uh, and it also has, uh, uniquely to these expansions, your new investigators. You're not That's gonna right. find investigators more or less than anything else. Uh, there is one exception to that, but this is where you're going to find one new investigator as it stands now for every one of those factions that are available for play. That's right. So you've got Dunwich Legacy. There's a number of other expansions that introduce 
these other themes, and that kind of gives you the macro story beginning. That's right. And this is where everything is going to start, and you can run through that a bunch. Now, past that, I like to think of it as there are essentially six chapters in the book that is set up by this expansion. That's right. So if we look at that, and during, when you're like caught up, when the game is releasing, it usually releases about once a month, these little packs. Uh, but if you're catching up, then they're all going to be available. So let, let, me just, let me just put them all out here. Look at them. Do, we, do you That's remember beautiful. the order? I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're actually numbered on the back. So it's, I mean, it's like, it's... She's not even... Boom. Not Hold on, no, we can do it. Okay, do just it. Give me the... Oh, yeah, it says right there. Pack oh, two, like... five, six, et cetera. You just said that. You weren't lying. Bam. All right, there so here's, here's how this here. works. So on first, one. this expansion comes out. And then a little while later, then pack one comes out. And then a month later, two, three, four, five, six. Then there's usually a little bit of a break. And then swap out, new expansion comes out. And then more packs start releasing. Six more to come. So this together is... Cycle. A cycle. And it's your entire kind of thematic experience is going to be in the same thing. You take a breather here. It's like, whew. All right, now I want to get back in there. You buy a new expansion, six new packs, and they introduce a totally new theme. So, for instance, uh, the Carcosa cycle. That's right. Incredible. And it's a totally different feel than this Dunwich Legacy cycle. So, or whatever that cycle's called. Do you remember what the cycle's called? This it's, one, Dunwich. Is it Dun just the Dunwich cycle? I believe so. Maybe Dunwich Legacy. Yes, it's, Dunwich Legacy. Essentially, Carcosa is way different. It, it gets a little bit more like mysterious, confusing, Yellow King, guy mm -hmm. walking around. It's very, Perception is reality. Very it's crazy. scared. And then there's like the Forgotten Age, uh, which is like Indiana Jones mm -hmm. and Aztec jungles. Aztec stuff. Woo. So, kind of, once you get your core sets, just, just look at what expansions are available and you'll, yeah. you'll get a description of the kind of adventures you'll have there. And then just pick up that expansion and then pick up those six Mythos packs mm -hmm. and play it all out, have a great time, and then continue to do that forever. The only foil I would say to all of that, as beautifully rendered as it is, is that uh, there seems to be, as you might expect, it's kind of unavoidable in games like this, a little bit of power creep as the, the game progresses. So that if you were to jump, say, from the core box right into, say, cycle three, uh, you would probably have a bit more of a difficult time because you're missing the player cards that you would have gotten from the first two cycles, uh, which can be some essential assets that you might want to play to overcome whatever challenges, obstacles, and foes that you're facing. You're absolutely right. And we should mention, uh, on that note, that the core set actually kicks off its own cycle, and that's important. Mm. I guess it, you really could take it it's with It's self-contained. Right? Core set comes with its own investigators. It's the only thing that you ha might uh, consider buying more than one of, uh, but only two at the most. Everything else you can get away with only buying one. It's the smallest cycle on Earth. That's right. What else we got? Okay, let's go next to some... Let's stick with the cards. Yeah. I like these. Let's look at these these scenarios. Okay, so along, so we've got two other things. Um, yeah. Let's pull these up. So these are th things called scenario packs, and they come in a variety of strange uh, formats and Shapes looks and sizes and, sizes and whatnot. Um, Tell me, tell me about these scenario packs. I know so, that we've run through a few, but I don't know exactly how to describe them best. These are standalone scenarios that have no player cards whatsoever. It is a singular episode. Uh, whereas in a uh, Mythos pack that we were looking at earlier, there's going to be one adventure in there as well as some player cards. Or in an expansion, you're going to have two or three adventures with player cards, the core set, the same. This is just one adventure. This is just one adventure. No player cards whatsoever. So if you're looking for just a quick little shot in the arm and generally a notably higher challenge uh, of difficulty, then this is what those represent. They're all usually quite unique. And uh, I got to underscore that the uh, developmental creative team behind this game really pulls out all the stops when it comes time for these particular scenario packs. So you're going to enjoy them. It's going to kind of put you through your paces, and it's going to be a, a really good time. It's this one, Labyrinth and Lunacy is is particularly insane. Insane because it, it involves a lot of people. Like you just Lunacy read about all these in the title. three separate groups, and you got to do all sorts of stuff. It's really fun. So yeah, you can just check out these scenario packs if you just want to do a quick like standalone, take a shot at something and, and have a good time. Not That's really right. linked to a bigger bigger plot. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then let's go to... Let's leave that one for last. <laughs> let's go. It's like a bag of tricks. I feel like a magician. Remember those cycles we were talking about? There's a little bit of an addition to them. Let's just get it out for posterity. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it all over. Boom. Here's all these. Here's some packs. All the packs are back. Now, if you buy these packs from us, guys, you might get one that Robert has touched, which is 
<laughs> for me, a real selling point. That's right. All right, let's, I'm not gonna stand these up. You guys get it. Okay, so you get all this. This is a cycle over here. Cycle, boom. Player boom. cards, scenario cards, great. But get then, it. apparently, that we've only had one so far, so we'll see if the trend holds. At the end of a, once a cycle has been concluded, sometime thereafter, you can expect this recapper thing. Uh, it's, That's the official name, actually. <laughs> it's a very recapper technical thing. term, recapper thing. It's called um, an upgrade expansion, I believe? An, an upgrade expansion, it's going to send you back uh, to do uh, another take, a different other take, of something that you've done in the previous cycle, and it's going to come in this lovely style of box, which is supposed to contain and hold uh, all of the cards and whatnots that you have gotten for the previous cycle. Perhaps not all the player cards, you might want to keep those separate to make your deck building life a little bit easier, but all of the would-be scenario cards and all that kind of stuff, you can keep right in here. So if it's uh, time to revisit anything here, all you have to do is reach for this one compartmentalized box, everything's there, and you, you can, can start adventuring all over again. You can store it all in here, it's That's designed right. specifically for that, and it has some updates to some of these scenarios in that cycle. That's right. So you get to revisit the, the scenario, change out some of those original cards, and then it switches up entirely the scenario that you remember from the old cycle. And it is just cardboard, but it's a fairly sturdy, it's very and sturdy. good looking box. It's very like nice. It. It's very nice. I mean, look at this. This is, uh, look at that. I Doesn't know. Look good together. Look at all this stuff. All that stuff. All right, so then finally, now this is probably, uh, of all the things that you should do, this is this is more on the luxury side of not necessary, but quite nice. Quite right. Now these, I mean, these are like your core. Your essentials. You should, you should just get those. Get those are really nice. All right, and then finally, as much as I really just want to try to. Let's keep moving stuff around. I like that. I'm sure it picks up great on the audio <laughs> there. This is what's called a novella. Don't know if you guys have seen this. Readers are watching. <laughs> Uh, so this is, uh, novella is basically a tiny novel. That's, uh, I think it's an official translation. It's been shrunk. And there's, there's really two things to say about these novellas. One is they come out essentially randomly. We never really quite know when we're getting one of these. True. Uh, and secondarily, they come with some exclusive Arkham Horror the Card Game cards. And Go that on. is why there's often a frenzy to get these little novellas. Exclusive, you say, what kinds of cards? I'm talking about investigators, <gasps> potentially from sets that haven't even been released yet, which has happened before. It's true. And then what are called replacement cards for their signature cards that that investigator includes in their deck. So for instance, you might have a different version of an investigator that is put in a novella, and they might have a different signature card and a different signature weakness that you can either swap out for the existing one, like in the normal sets, okay. or when I found this out recently, you can add both in. <laughs> you can Ooh. have both signature cards and all of the signature downsides as well, and uh, just just try to roll the dice. And evidently, they're real page turners. Uh, uh, honestly, the community is somewhat divided uh, about their overall quality of story, but the cards that uh, Stephen was mentioning are Always more than good. worth it. They, they're fairly inexpensive. They MSRP generally at about fourteen ninety five, so it's not going to break the bank when they come out. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's take a second here and uh, do a quick recap. So if you're starting playing, get at least one core set. Really, you should probably just get two, especially if you're buying them at the same time, save on shipping or, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to get All two. All the ins and outs. So there's that. So get your two core sets. Then what I would do is play through that a few times. You get your friends hooked and anybody, seriously anybody. It sells I've, itself, honestly. I've uh, told my father about this game and Whoa. he sounded super interested in it. So this is Whoa. this is something that can... Let, let me know if that ever pans out. Yeah, I know, Goodness. right? It's about time. It's not mm -hmm. about interest. It's always about time. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so, so anybody can get involved in this. Don't just seclude this to your little board game group or whatever. Ask anybody. You'd be surprised. Um, and then go and look at the various cycles that are currently in existence for the game. And if you read each expansion's description, uh, you can find it anywhere, like just do a Google search, um, you will find that it lays out the theme really nicely as far as what that cycle is gonna be all about. That's right. So like you can read, do you want really creepy ghoul-based stuff? Do you want the Indiana Jones style adventure stuff? Um, do you want the mysterious, like uh, everything's weird, true mm -hmm. detective, yellow king type stuff? Make your choice there and then buy that expansion. You only need the one expansion. 
you get that, and then you're like, okay, cool. So you play through that, and then start either collecting the previously existing Mythos packs that correspond with that cycle, mm -hmm. uh, or if they aren't all released yet, catch up to where it is, and then when the next one comes out, buy it, next one comes out, buy it, and then you're there, and you go to the next cycle, and the next cycle, and another cycle. Eventually, you will have it all. You'll be caught up. You'll have it all, and then you'll be able to play anything at any time, and you can stay on top of the next release, the next release, and just continue to tell a story over the months and months to follow, That's and right. hopefully forever. We yeah. hope the game continues. Now, uh, on that note, we should mention that we have a subscription service that, as Arkham players, we literally were like, we've got to do something like this because it is way too hard slash annoying to try to keep up with everything that's coming out for Arkham and get it in a timely manner. That's right. So essentially, all you have to do is you just sign up for the types of products that you want, mm -hmm. and then as soon as they release, we charge you and we ship them to you. Break them down. What, what kind Super of easy. types are there? Uh, there are expansions. So this is our box subscription. This is So anytime one of these comes out, we charge you, we ship it to you. The cycle kicker offer. Easy. And this is really for people, once you know you like Arkham, which is 99% of people who play it, uh, just start your sub and then you won't ever fall behind. Then we have the Mythos Pack subscription. So every time a Mythos Pack comes out, it's about once a month, we send it to you. Nice. Uh, then we've got the supplement subscription, and this is when anything you know weird comes out. And that, and that this thing guy. as well. Yeah. Yep. Just basically anything doesn't quite fit a mold. Uh, that's the supplement subscription. Mold's been broken. And then we've got the uh, novella subscription. That's right. And so anytime the book comes out, and here, I mean, this is like the hardest and weirdest thing to keep up with, to be honest. We had yes. one just come out the other day that was just like... Out of the blue. Out of the blue, and then it was gone, and everybody's freaking out, uh, including us, because I wanted to play some of this. Okay, so there's that. All your base products, good way to get them is our subscription. There's also, of course, they'll be available hopefully at your local store, although it's weird. I don't think a lot of local stores care about cooperative games, if I'm being honest with you, but it's just my it's take. It's what we've heard. It's what we've and heard. quite extensively. Then there's one more step, and that's when you're like, Ooh. you're like, I love Arkham Horror, the card game. We're just taking this, steps. This is the thing that I want to spend my cash on. Uh, we've got some options for you there, too. Now, there's a number mm, of... Bring them down. There's some third-party tokens out there, um, but we make some too, and we, uh, I love these so gotta, very much. Just gotta tell uh, the people. Yeah, maybe we'll put some nice images of hey. them up. But we have a set of tokens called Mythos Tokens. You can find those on our website. We have both investigator sets and campaign sets. So your Isn't campaign beautiful? sets are your dooms and basically anything that you need for the board. That's right. And then likewise, you have investigator sets and that are is any token that you need for your investigator. So that's your health and your sanity. And man, do they just, I love them. They're, I, they're I, all quite beautiful. They have a good feel to them, nice and thick. And I'm not saying pick that up. as like a, a marketing person. I'm Which saying is. that as somebody who plays Arkham, I use these every time and every, I just feel great. Yeah, no, they, they're very, very nice. They're quite fetching, honestly. Uh, and they, they go very well with the overall theme and vibe of the universe, which is dark and Art Deco-y and all that kind of good stuff. Stormy. Yeah. And then we do some, occasionally some cycle-themed Doom tokens that are specifically for new cycles that are coming out. So keep your eyes on those. And then one of our absolute favorites is the, the Mythos, board. Uh, Mythos Board. This is a new product type that we introduced a while back and it has been a just an awesome addition to the Mythos token line. And basically, this is a light, nice little slot for your uh, investigators. So you pop your investigator in the middle, you have room on the sides for your clues, your resources, those kinds of things, and then you can take your sanity damage and your health as you go. And it's just a nice thematic way. They're felt, felt lined on the back here. They're and lovely. You can shake the table, you know, and it's Quite not, sturdy. A, not a big deal. They look like they're fall. beautiful copper, which they are made with. They have copper powder in them, yeah. So basically that's your luxury option. You have third party tokens. We have some, there's, there's some other ones online so you can check those out that's right. um, as well. There's a host of options available. So I think that's it. Did we, did that, we cover yeah, it? Yeah, that's top to toe, I think. So start with your core sets and then move on to your expansions. If you like the expansion you played through, collect the Mythos packs that correspond to that expansion. Continue on throughout the expansions, getting more as you go. You always have the option to come back to a cycle that you enjoyed you with your uh, your upgrade expansion, that big long old, box. Big old upgrade box. There. If you just want to try a new experience that's not particularly tied to a cycle, you've got your scenario packs. They introduce like all falling. sorts of interesting adventures for a group. And then we also, of course, have the novellas where you can read about certain investigators and get some exclusive cards. And that's that right. It's right here. 
So thank you guys so very much for watching. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them in the comments section. And uh, we hope you genuinely enjoy your journey through Arkham. As players of this game, Robert and I love it. It's one of the finest games I've ever played, truly. Until next time, keep playing.